Well, rough day today, guys. Um, we are down by Jacksonville right now. After we got our truck wash, uh, we took off and got like, it was like five miles or something like that, five, maybe eight miles. I think it was the eight mile marker. Um, took a break there. We knew we weren't gonna make it down here in time. Um, so we had plenty of time and I wasn't sure if I was going to go all the way there or not. And if I was, I wanted to get something to eat. So I stopped and got something to eat. And uh, I pulled into a, a pilot parking lot. And uh, there was a guy with a flatbed in front of me. You seen him whip up around the corner. He was starting to back up. He was getting set up for a backup into the back row there. And it was like three spots wide, wide open. I sat there, well that motherfucker took five attempts to back this thing up into, well, I don't know what, a 30 foot wide hole, straight back. Couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. On his fifth attempt, his fifth pull up, I finally said, fuck you, dude, and I fucking went, I went behind him. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I went behind him, I whipped up right up next to him, boom, threw it in a hole on the other side of one of the trucks he was trying to fit in between. Like, Jesus Christ, man, you need to fucking practice. So if you can't straight back, I mean, it wasn't a perfect straight back, but it was no blindside back. It wasn't even a 45. You know, he wasn't he wasn't sitting like this. It was like this. And he couldn't back it up and go like that. Holy fuck, dude. That was scary. And then uh the hole I got in, I went inside, took a piss, got my drinks, got my lunch. I got a guy backing in right next to me right now. I gotta kinda watch him. Oh, change his mind. Um, got my shit, came out to my truck, tinkered with a few things, ate, and uh, pushed the brakes, getting ready, just leaving. Uh, a day cab JB Hunt driver, which I didn't know they did this, a day cab JB Hunt truck pulling logs. A little log trailer, it was a pup trailer, it was a little thing. Uh, he decides he wants to hit the hole next to me. Holy fuck, he couldn't back up either. He was all over the place, and then he started running down the line that separates the stalls right on my side. I had to give him the air horn and lay on it. He didn't stop for a while. And I shit you not, he came that close within my mirror. He was running right down that close to my mirror. And as I'm honking to him to stop his fucking truck, because he's way out of whack and there's no reason... A day cab with a fucking 30-foot pup trailer. Dude couldn't back that fucking thing up to save his ass either. I don't know what's in the water there, but... I gave him the horn. He finally stopped. Pulled ahead a little bit. Got a different angle. Which it was basically a straight back. But when they're backing up, you see their tractors just going like this. Dude, it's a straight fucking back. What are you doing? You know, he could see down it. it wasn't a wide load. Guys just overcorrecting, you know, not, they're not, they don't know what they're doing. And, uh, he got about three quarters away in that hole and I just said, fuck this, I'm getting out of here. And I fucking tore off out. I'm not usually one to do that, but two motherfuckers that can't drive are right by me. One just about hit me. I wasn't having it. So um, we got down here and uh, ended up shooting the shit and running with one of the drivers that loaded a uh, big uh, haul truck up in Iowa. He, he hit me up and said, hey, I thought that was you that was loading up uh, Monday up in Iowa. I'm like, yeah. He kind of shooting the shit and said he saw the news that a big oversized down here smacked the bridge. 
It's a big old fucking to do right now. And uh, I guess he wedged her up under the ridge and he had two pilot, he had two pole cars. For those of you guys that run out on a high load, they run out front and they got the big pole sticking up. So if they hit the pole, they know you're going to hit the load. And uh, two pole cars, alternate escorts with it, along with police escorts. Someone fucked up, either the state fucked up that routing or someone wasn't paying attention and missed the turn. And the cops were just running with them. Um, and if you don't know, I, when I used to do it, um, those police officers are off duty. Uh, you pay for them, they're on overtime and they sign up for these shifts to escort oversized loads as overtime. So when you have an oversized load that needs police escorts, uh, you know, you have to put in for the permit and then the police have to, they'll post a bulletin on their, in their department and, you know, yada yada officer will say, yeah, I'll take that one on that day. So you're paying for them and again in florida it's a subcontractor deal to where um the police officers are off duty they have to rent the squad car from the state of florida to do it so i got super ego backing into me backing in next to me right now hopefully it'll back into me no four ways. Whoa, 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 buddy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. These motherfuckers, dude. He about got me. He's backing in about fucking... He's backing in pretty quick. He about got me. I can't. I don't know what's in. These guys are in their fucking heads. But, uh. We're down here, and uh, I guess there was a big car fire on the road. Right down the road here. Um, so we're like 20 minutes from Jacksonville. Jesus, dude. All right, well, now that we're not distracted, that guy was Next Gen Industries pulling a Super Ego trailer. The dude is backing up super fucking fast. There's no reason for it. He had to stop because he was going to hit me. He was going to fucking go right into my passenger side headlight. So he slams on the brakes, and that's when he see me like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then he fucking yanks it forward quick, turns, just boom, starts flying back again. It's like... There is no reason for that, you know? Um, but like I said, we're about 20 minutes from Jacksonville. Uh, we're gonna get up in the morning and drop off this one excavator. Then we gotta go to our third stop. And then our fourth stop is in West Palm Beach um, for that backhoe. We're gonna drop that off. My dispatcher called me uh, just after I got here asking if I wanted a load out of uh, Cape Canaveral Can Cape Canaveral that's where we went in the last videos where um, you know I told her that when I booked this load I said we'll probably be pulling out of Cape Canaveral um, it's lumber right out of the port it, that was a decent paying load the last one we did uh, it kind of took me in the middle of fucking nowhere but she called me up. She goes, hey, I got a load out of Cape Canaveral. I'm like, told you. She goes, I don't know what it is, though, and I can tell her right away what it was. It's it's lumber. She goes, it's 48,000 pounds. I said, yeah, it's lumber. It's lumber coming out of that port. Um, we got video, uh, a couple videos back. That's where we pulled out of. Um, she goes, it's going right up to Minnesota. I don't remember where. Um, big ice storm up there right now. Uh Everybody at home is freezing their ass off, a bunch of snow and ice, and it was, uh, 
86 degrees today here in Florida. I'm sweating. I got the windows down. That's why it's kind of loud. Uh, I got about, got about 90 sitting here in the parking lot when I got here. I'm pretty warm. I'm not idle in the truck yet. It's cooling down decent. As long as these trucks next to me don't idle their trucks, you're all right. Once all the trucks around you start idling, the fans start blowing the engine heat up. And it radiates and you have to run your truck. Um, but she said it's going, she said that, anyways, that, she said that load is going right up to uh, Minnesota and it's paying 3100 bucks. Fuck it. Yeah, why not? Um, so that'll be, you know, we'll deliver that Monday. So this will be a full seven days. And we got 4300 to come down here. So 7400 bucks for the week. No tarps. Because that's what I asked her. I said, um, I said, well, you got two questions. She goes, I don't have any real info on it yet. I said, well, you got two questions you need to ask. You need to ask if it's a tarp, number one. Because I did see some guys tarping over there. And uh, number two, do we need dunnage? For some reason, the step deck has zero dunnage on it, which is dumb. And I'm not about to go buy a bunch of dunnage if I don't need it. So if I had to, I can, but I'm, I'm not going to. Uh, came back right away, said no tarp and uh, no dunnage needed. So it'd be awesome. She goes, are you good with 48? I'm like, I haven't had a chance to scale an empty, the empty step deck with this truck yet. You know, I've pretty much been loaded most, most all the time with it. So um, I told her kind of, I said, well, it's not really exactly how it works there which is nice about going back to a place you've been in. Um, that's what we had to do with the Conestoga. I said, you get loaded up, you get on their scale, and if you're overweight, they just pull a bundle off and that's it, you're done. And then they adjust the bill of lading. So um, that's gonna be our plan. We're gonna pick that up Friday morning just to be safe. Um, because today is Wednesday tomorrow will be Thursday it gives us all day tomorrow to um, make these three deliveries and I don't think they're, they're not that far apart it's only only a couple hours worth of driving realistically I could probably say yeah we'll do a Thursday but I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll deliver all these Thursday and then we'll just mosey around take our time um, drive nice and easy so we're not dealing with traffic number one number two um, we're not pushing at balls to the wall trying to, you know, eat fuel. So, Friday morning, we're going to be loading up lumber. And then uh, Monday afternoon, we'll deliver this lumber in Minnesota. Somewhere around there, I'm going to have to take a break because we're getting pretty close on hours by the time Monday rolls around. Um, We've been rolling pretty light, so we might be able to do a recap. Um, that's one thing I haven't really looked into yet, but I think we're safe for the night. I got trucks on both sides of me, and uh, hopefully nobody comes out of here and rips my fucking hood off. Because it's been about the way it went today. So I'm gonna check out for the night, and I'll catch you guys in the morning.